This is Albania. They start with a non-accepted religion, and they start with an army and navy they can't afford. Albania finds itself surrounded by would-be rivals who would wish to do us harm. Soon they shall learn of our peaceful ways, by force. We start with the strongest faction leader in the game, Skanderberg. A 656 leader with 5 shock and 5 fire, he will ensure we are able to aggressively promote Albanian civilization throughout the Balkans. Let's roll. We have a pretty straightforward start, fabricate claims in Serbia, build our army to the force limits, select the estate that allows you to get a free carrack, and complete the first two Albanian missions in the mission tree, by increasing stability to plus one. In the meantime, you should be converting your provinces by using the religious conversion edict, and missionary strength estate modifiers. We want to go to war with Serbia first, as soon as we have the fabricated claim completed. Make sure to rival them before you declare the war. Sometimes the Ottomans will guarantee them. Uh, although you can declare war in Venice right away if this happens, I generally don't recommend it. Normally I don't like advising people to restart, but in this case I think it's probably justified. You're better off getting a first early war against Serbia rather than trying to defeat Venice early on. We got lucky here in that the Ottomans didn't guarantee Serbia. I have decided that Serbia will be the first country to volunteer to join our empire. Welcome to Albania, my friends. First we'll move our army into Zera. Then we'll attempt to take out the Bosnian army first. Since we should be able to win any siege race between the Bosnian capital and my own capital, that is the strategy we shall employ. Cleverly, the Serbian army does attempt to reinforce the Bosnian army. To prevent our damaged army from being caught, we simply scorch her off and leave the province. And finish off the remainder of the Bosnian army. Then we're going to head south and start sieging the Bosnian capital. This time the Serbian army does catch us, but since our troops are fully reinforced, we should be able to win this battle easily. Skanderberg is leading our army after all. A fine victory. Now it just comes down to mopping up the Bosnian army and fully sieging them. We'll sue for a separate peace. Then we'll turn all our attention to Serbia. Picking up war reparations and a bit of money is going to be really nice. After all, we do start in a pretty bleak economic situation. We're going to need all the money we can get. Once we peace out Bosnia, we get the Black Flag modifier. That's going to allow us to move back to our capital before the Serbians do. Therefore, we should take a nice defensive battle in our capital, using the mountains as defensive terrain. And that is about as one-sided a battle as you can get. Now we can simply focus on carpet sieging down all of Serbia's provinces, although I do warn you that can take a while. They actually have two fortifications, one in their capital and one directly to the west of their capital. Unfortunately, we can't access a capital until we siege down the first fortification, so we have to do this sequentially as rather than at the same time. With the Serbian army defeated, we can simply sue for peace. We want to fully annex them and get as much money as possible. It is going to cost us a lot of administrative monarch power to fully annex Serbia, but since we only increased the stability by one at the start to unlock one of those national decisions, we should be fine. And having only lost 9,000 casualties, our manpower pool is still pretty high. That's going to be important, because we are not done with waging war yet. Herzegovina is our next target. They'll make a fine addition to our empire. They only have a few thousand troops and no allies. Fortunately, that makes them the easiest target. From here on out, though, our wars are going to be a lot more difficult. After sieging down their capital, we sue for peace and fully annex them. Whilst coring their provinces, we can start to look at securing alliances. Since we are making pretty rapid progress, we can unlock our next Albanian mission, Expand Albania. Although Albania isn't noted for getting very good missions with good rewards, they're still probably worth doing. Having improved relations, we're able to secure our first alliance with Austria. 
During intervals between wars, you should work on expanding your fleet. We're going to need all those ships for the naval battles to come. Slowly but surely, we've been improving our relations with Poland. If we hire a diplomatic advisor, that should push us over the threshold where we can seal an alliance with them. Since Poland has a vassal on Lithuania, they're one of the strongest allies you can get in the early game. With Austria and Poland both as allies now, we feel like we're in a pretty strong position. We can be reasonably confident at this stage that the Ottomans won't declare war on us. That gives us the initiative going forward. It looks like someone threw a book at our faction leader, Skanderbeg, and he's now a 666 leader. We've only actually had him for 12 years, hopefully he'll reign for many more. And about two seconds after completing my sentence, Skanderbeg of course dies. That must have been one hell of a heavy book to kill the legendary Skanderbeg. Still though, his replacement isn't too bad. He's got reasonably good stats and he has plus 5% discipline. Once our truce timer expires from Bosnia, we immediately declare war. This will probably be our last easy war before we start taking on the major factions. We swiftly defeat the Bosnian army, then we carpet siege down all their provinces. We're very fortunate in the sense that Bosnia hasn't been able to secure reliable allies. Once Bosnia has been defeated, we fully annex them. None of these provinces we're taking are particularly valuable, but we still need them, especially if we're going to take on the Ottomans later on. They are going to be a crucial source of manpower for us once we core them. Okay, that's enough peace for now, let's declare war again. This time our target's set in Venice. The main thing here is to allow our heavy hitter ally Austria to do most of the work. I do want to minimise casualties in this war because we're going to have a lot of war and manpower issues coming up soon. I am going to spend some time skirmishing down the Venetian fleet, mostly because I want to try and capture some ships. Although these engagements look quite unfavourable for us, and to be quite frank they are, I am nonetheless not suffering any actual ship losses. Since we're going to have to unblock the Venetian Strait to siege down Venice's capital, we're going to have to establish some type of naval superiority, either by winning battles or distracting the enemy fleet. This naval battle looks like it could be our first major defeat of the entire campaign. Although we have very good ships and a lot of them, Austria's poor morale at the battle start is just really adversely affecting us. Uh, quite interestingly, the Austrians are actually struggling a bit with the Venetian army, but as Albania this is really where we excel. We have really powerful troops and good generals by this stage of the game. We've also built up a lot of military monarch power and that's given us a big technology advantage over adversaries. You can pretty much see how one-sided these battles are. Unfortunately I noticed the Venetian fleet is still proving to be a bit of a problem since they're blocking the Venetian strait. So I conjure up a strategy to lure the Venetian fleet away from the straits so I can give my army time to cross. Once we capture Venice, the war is pretty much over. Look at that, Venice does indeed take the bait. Our army is now clear to defeat the last Venetian army and siege down their capital. From here on out, it's pretty clean sailing, folks. Just gotta mop this one up and it's on to the next war. Back in the home front, it looks like our citizens are getting a bit rowdy. We have multiple rebellions raging all across our country, and so before I can peace out with Venice, I have to deal with these guys. Playing as Albanian and employing a strategy, you are going to have to deal with a lot of rebels. It's just the way it goes. Try and prevent them from adding additional separatism to your provinces, but as in this case, it's not always possible. Peacing out with Venice, we get pretty much all we want. We get provinces, a lot of money, and that all-important war reparations. 
This pretty much concludes the easy part of this playthrough. Everything from here on out is going to get a lot more interesting and a lot harder. You've probably been speculating at this point what comes next. Well, we've got two choices. We can go after the Hungarians or the Ottomans. I'm a little nervous going after the Ottomans at this stage yet, though. I want to give it a little longer, and that means our next obvious target has to be Hungary. Hungary, unfortunately, is no pushover. But with a rising power, I'm pretty sure we can deal with them. Well, I'll probably regret this later, but let's declare war in Hungary. So we can call in Poland, actually, but if we call in Poland, Hungary calls in Moscovy. I'm putting a lot of faith in my ally Poland holding the line here. They do have Lithuania as a vassal, so they should be fine. The real risk for us, of course, is if Poland sues for a separate peace. Leave me alone against Muscovy and the Teutonic Knights. So I want to try and win this war as quick as possible, while preventing my ally Poland from collapsing. And since we had some excess military monarch power, I dumped that into the first two ideas of the Quality Ideas group. And also looks like our army is performing quite well against Hungary, We're winning these first early battles, so that should be a good omen of what's to come. And thanks to the naval fleet we've been building all this time, we're going to be able to put up a naval blockade of Hungary. Honestly, I am getting a bit nervous though. It looks like Muscovy has a lot of troops, something I should have known in hindsight. It's also possible I've underestimated the amount of troops the Teutonic Knights can field, and they have very good troops if my memory serves me well. And we do siege down the first Hungarian fortification. Now I think I'm going to have to help our struggling allies out in the north. I still don't think it's time to panic just yet. Although I am leaving myself scope to panic in the future if it's required. Our army does continue to perform well, but I'm just going to keep an eye on our manpower pool since that is only about 10 or 12,000. Oh man, that's a lot of Hungarian troops sieging down our provinces. The Teutonic Knights were attempting to siege down the Poland capital Warsaw. Looks like we're going to arrive in the nick of time. Pretty sure if they successfully siege down that capital, that could have forced Poland out of war early. The dastardly Hungarians are attempt to retake the fortification we sieged down earlier. We're going to have to stop them and stop them quick. If you think because we're winning every single battle decisively, we're destined to win the war, think again. Many times have I won every single battle only to lose a war. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> now I'm going to try and blitz down the Teutonic Knights quickly. <sighs> God damn it, Poland, you traitorous dogs. Once again, you stab me in the back. What the hell am I supposed to do against Moscovy, Teutonic Knights, and Hungary by myself? Is this going to be truly the most unfortunate thing to happen to an EU4 game? Well, in any case, our dreams of a quick conquest are now dashed. We're going to have to employ a more attritional style here and hope we can eke out a victory by blitzing down Hungary. First though, we'll try and sue for a separate peace with the Teutonic Knights while defeating the Hungarian army. If Muscovy's armies show up in Albania though, my mood is going to darken considerably. Actually, in second thought, things aren't quite as bad as it first seemed. Hungary's armies have pretty much been defeated. And having sieged down the Teutonic Knights fortification, we should be able to sue for a separate peace with the Teutonic Knights early, and then close out the war against Hungary. With the Teutonic Knights out of war and Muscovy ostensibly bogged down fighting a war against Denmark, it should be pretty clear sailing from here on out. And now I'm just carpet sieging down the remainder of Hungary's provinces. I'm going to try and sue for peace, getting the provinces we want and as much money as possible. And so we do actually end up winning that war, but at a heavy cost. No thanks to Poland. 
that would be a pretty good time to embrace the next institution. And while we're at that, pay off some loans. And I just spotted there is one more faction we can take out. Istria only has one ally, Florence. We should be able to take them both out quite quickly and earn a bit of money in the process. Florence is actually one of the richer factions in Italy, therefore we'll try and get war reparations from them as well. Ah, now the Ottomans have declared war on another faction in the east. We could use this to our advantage. I think probably now is the moment of truth. We'll recruit some last troops and then we'll declare war on the Ottomans. Alright, it all comes down to this. May God have mercy on us all. It's going to be a hell of a lot easier for us if we are able to wrestle naval superiority from the Ottomans. So we are going to try. If we lose the naval battles, it's not that bad, but if we win, it's a big plus. Our priority target is we're going to try and siege down Constantinople as soon as possible, whilst fighting as many naval battles as we can. Since the Ottomans are busy in the east, we should have free reign at least for a year or so. Sieging down Constantinople is going to be hard though, as is defeating the Ottoman fleets. Incidentally, we've actually lost the first three naval battles, which is about what I expected, but we're going to keep recruiting galleys for now. Hopefully, if we can recruit enough of them, we can eventually win naval superiority. That's just going to help sieging down the Ottoman fortifications and eventually blocking the Strait of Marma, preventing the Ottomans from heading westward, if we get to that. Ah yes, another glorious naval defeat. On the other hand, we do successfully siege down Constantinople, so our first objective has been completed. These naval battles are absolutely brutal though, and it does actually matter a little bit since we declared a crusade or holy war against the Ottomans. That means the war objective will be to win the majority of the battles. So losing all these naval battles is actually somewhat problematic. I am actually pretty concerned about the Northern Front, in particular, I'm extremely nervous about Poland securing another separate piece. So we're going to have to head north, take on the main Ottoman army and save Poland from collapse. And in the process, we secure our first land victory against the Ottomans, and a pretty big one at that. Back in the high seas, our navy continues to suffer defeats at the hands of the Ottomans. I'm still somewhat confident though that if we continue to recruit galleys, we'll be able to eventually establish naval superiority here. Back on land, in the Polish borders, there is what I can only describe as complete Ottoman carnage. We're fighting as many battles as we can, we're winning all of them. Even in spite of that, I'm still extremely worried about Poland suing for a separate peace. They've already let us down once before. And since we just won a land battle, we of course have to lose a naval battle. The war has been going on for a hot minute now, so I have no doubt that our brave Polish allies are desperate to surrender. Accordingly, I'm doing everything I can in Lithuania to buy myself some time. Unfortunately, our Polish allies' battlefield performance is about as strong as their will to resist. For every battle we win, Poland loses a battle. Still though, we're able to inflict enough casualties on the Ottomans to get them out of Lithuania, at least temporarily. I take that opportunity to head south to try and siege down Crimea. I decide to fight another naval battle, and we lose that one as well. There's something wrong with our bloody ships today. I'm now in a frantic race of sorts with the Ottomans to see who can siege down their target first me sieging down Crimea and the Ottomans sieging down Constantinople. And we once again gloriously lose another naval battle. With Crimea captured, we rapidly head down south. I think the decisive battle of this campaign is about to occur. If we can hold them off in Constantinople, there's nothing that can really stop us. If we lose, we could be in a lot of trouble because the Ottomans still have a lot of troops left and we're relying upon Poland to hold down the northern flank. So I resist the temptation to dive headfirst into Constantinople. Instead, I allow the Ottomans to siege down the province. 
and having done that, they split their armies and send one army stack north to Ederine. With the help of our allies, that's where I choose to intercept them. We defeat their army and then head southeast back into Constantinople. We use our artillery to breach the walls, and once that's done, we assault the fortification. With Constantinople back under control, we choose to fight another naval battle. This time, by some miracle or freak circumstance, we're actually able to win a naval battle. This may be our first proper naval victory. And things in the northwest are looking pretty good. We're taking advantage of the fact that once the Ottomans siege down Constantinople, they split up their armies. Having won a single naval battle, and with the Ottoman armies defeated in the field, we can then head across the main strait. What follows is us and our allies sieging down Ottoman fortifications in Anatolia. I know it was very harsh in Poland, but to be fair to them, they decided to stick this one out. I guess they decided the fort of letting me down twice was just too much to bear. Still though, we were much more dependent on Austria than we were Poland. Having accumulated 100% war score, we're able to piece the Ottomans out. In this case, I opt to take Greek provinces. And with the Ottomans vanquished in the field of battle, that concludes our Albania conquest. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.